the next speaker, Sarah Beyer, who you've already met, who's an associate principal and director of sustainability at Magnuson Architecture and Planning, is going to present a, a case for well-balanced ventilation. It's a perfect uh, next session, given this whole uh, hour's worth of talk. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here with you. As recently as five years ago, throughout the multifamily industry, we were all designing cutting edge sustainable multifamily buildings that did not provide balanced ventilation to each habitable space. A profound shift in understanding of ventilation in multifamily buildings has been taking place in our industry, aided by the exponential growth of Passive House. Today, we know that we cannot present our projects as sustainable and healthy without filtered fresh air to every bedroom and living space provided by an energy recovery system or ERV or HRV. ERVs and balanced ventilation are foundational principle to passive house design, which we are striving for on every project. Even if we are not quite able to secure passive house certification for each project, we still advise our clients to provide balanced ventilation with energy recovery. This choice to incorporate ERVs though, is ideally made fairly early in the design process as the spatial requirements are best taken into consideration when planning unit layouts during schematic design. If a project team is unsure yet about pursuing Passive House and they do not plan for ERVs early, the decision to go and pursue Passive House will be that much harder later on. In addition to the spatial implications, at the moment, ERVs are one of the larger cost increases to Passive House design. Yet we now have the research to demonstrate that it has a really short payback and makes financial sense. The choice to provide ERVs can stand on its own and can be made early during a project, independent of the passive house decision if need be. Through project experience and research, we have considerable evidence to demonstrate it's the best choice of ventilation system from a health, durability, energy use, and life cycle cost perspective. And it's still surprising to us that ventilation strategy like this is not yet required by code in much of the US. Our firm, in collaboration with Bright Power, has recently conducted two studies to demonstrate why ventilation is best provided by ERVs or HRVs for any project and make the case for why balanced ventilation with recovery ventilation should be code minimum. They were conducted through NYSERDA's Buildings of Excellence Early Phase Design Study Grants for these two projects, Carmen Viegas Apartments and Solon Park. Both are new senior housing buildings in New York City to start construction in the next year or so. The study for CVA dove into various ventilation options available, code minimum, best practice above code, passive house and passive house options, including how to couple them with ground source heat pump heating and cooling system. We compared them in terms of the upfront cost and the resulting energy savings and calculated a simple payback. The Solon Park project study focused on modeling similar ventilation options to CVA and their results on energy consumption, as well as a deeper dive into the indoor air quality they produced, focusing on control of con carbon dioxide concentration and particulate matter. Before we get into the study, just a quick reminder of how air moves. It is important to be able to visualize how, how air is moving in our dwellings where we spend at least a third of our lives. Air acts like a fluid and moves by pressure differential, moving from high to low pressure. So for example, we can use fans to create low pressure areas by extracting air out, let's say through a bathroom. This creates higher pressure areas around the apartment, which then tries to move to the lower pressure areas in the uh, space of the apartment. Nature of pores of vacuum, so to speak. So the first ventilation option that a project has is, of course, code minimum. In multifamily dwellings, code requires exhaust-only systems and does not require any intentional or dedicated pathway for the incoming air supply. This creates low pressure areas in the apartment, and air is now trying to make its way in, finding any gap or crack in the surrounding surfaces. In other words, fresh air is intended to come in through general leaky exterior wall construction. 
It will also come in through your neighbor's walls and the shared corridor. Here in this ventilation option, you can see the vertical exhaust shafts that run up the building and the ductwork extracting air from the kitchen and bath. The space conditioning in this project is ground source heat pumps, so there's a heat pump in each apartment. Now, best practice for exhaust-only design recognizes that without a dedicated opening in the facade, the air being drawn into the apartments has a very small chance of being new air from the outside. In fact, it's mostly stale air from your neighbors and corridor, as this is the majority of the perimeter surface area of your apartment. And even though it's not required or even mentioned in code, most exhaust-only buildings now have trickle vents or small openings in window frames typically to intentionally allow that air to enter from the outdoors. In all of the following options, you will see the construction costs calculated by the GC and the annual energy costs calculated by Bright Power using PHPP. We modeled passive house levels of insulation for all of these scenarios, but the air tightness varied whether it was a passive house level in the ERV options you'll see soon, or five ACH for the options that in, had intentional openings in the facade, such as a trickle vent. In this ventilation option, the mechanical system that's doing the heating and cooling in the apartment must work harder now compared to code minimum in order to condition the outdoor air coming in through the trickle vent. However, the fresh air source is slightly more reliable. But getting this, fresh, this fresh air into your apartment, which is extremely important for your health, is not actually really reliable through a trickle vent. Often people close them when they're not drawing when they're drawing in cold air, making spaces uncomfortable. Our industry now has numerous studies demonstrating that they don't really work as intended. The, make, the, the desired makeup air will move through them only if they are essentially the only hole in the enclosure of the apartment. If the total surface area of gaps and cracks in the surfaces surrounding your apartment are of a larger total size than the trickle vent, then the majority of the air being pulled in won't be through the trickle vent. The Department of Energy, for example, has measured that only about 13 to 36 percent of the intended amount of makeup air actually comes in through the trickle vent. So the next option would be to introduce fresh air, uh, fresh air opening at the ground source heat pump. In this design, air movement is enhanced by a fan, ensuring truly outdoor air would always be drawn in and the opening would not be closed by the user. It also provides a more comfortable interior environment because the outdoor air is first conditioned by the heat pump before it reaches you. However, it lowers the efficiency of the heat pump, which has to work harder now to heat or cool this outdoor air. Now here's where we start to integrate the incredible benefits of energy recovery ventilation technology. To save on heating and cooling costs, we can provide an integrated mechanical unit here that contains an ERV as well as the heat pump. Now the heat pump has a fresh air source from the ERV with narrower temperature ranges to work with. And you can see that reflected in the slightly lower energy costs. However, not every ground source heat pump manufacturer provides this integrated unit and their ERV efficiencies are limited or we could do slightly better in terms of energy efficiency and have a standalone ERV unit in each apartment, which allows for a more efficient unit to be specified. This decreases energy costs quite significantly, but increases construction costs proportionally. This would be the first option so far in this study that would allow us to achieve a passive house project. This next option is another passive house one, but lowers the construction and maintenance costs by providing a centralized system with vertical sh shafts and one large ERV serving many apartments. This also removes all penetrations from the facade, which is desirable in a large building such as this, because those exterior louvers need to be cleaned regularly, and this limits the number of filters also that need to be changed. Finally, this is the same centralized ERV option design, but with a Passive House certified unit with a higher rated efficiency. Here is a summary of all the options indicating their yearly total energy costs and the percent difference versus the baseline of exhaust only with trickle vent. When comparing these energy cost savings now to the upfront construction costs, we can see that the centralized ERV design compared to the baseline of exhaust only with an intake fan at the heat pump, 
the upfront additional construction costs start to pay themselves back within nine years. Compared to code minimum of exhaust only with trickle vents, the payback is about 14 years. For this project specifically, the study was conducted before it was decided to pursue Passive House. This payback of the energy savings to the upfront costs was acceptable to the owners, and we believe it will be to many of our owners as well. This on top of the health, maintenance, durability, and durability benefits solidified the decision. Now we'll get into the more health-focused part of the study. In this portion, we also examine several nuances that affect the energy usage of centralized ERV options. Using eQuest, Bright Power modeled many variables shown here, creating 43 different combinations. This presentation will just give a summary, and it will be available through NYSERDA's Buildings of Excellence website once published. This table essentially demonstrates again what we learned from the first section, that central ERVs with high efficiency result in significantly lower building energy use. We also examined how these energy results were affected by our location of ERV, such as a single one on the roof or one per floor, the air tightness of the facade, code minimum, passive house or in between, and the air and the quality of the air filter. We found that a rooftop location did not significantly alter the energy usage, even though there was less static pressure versus the per floor, floor location. And naturally, the tighter facades performed better. Also, we found that the MER filtration level did not significantly affect the energy usage. There was only a slight increase in the higher levels of infiltration. This is important because an incredible benefit of energy, energy recovery ventilation systems is that we're able to now truly filter that incoming fresh air, and MERV-13 filters really outperform MERV-8. For the indoor air quality modeling, we focused on an infiltration-only scenario, a code minimum exhaust-only with trickle vent, and a central ERV. These diagrams show where and how much air is coming into the apartment. The corridor and the apartments were modeled as sealed to Energy Star tightness levels and not pressurized differently from the apartment being studied. The infiltration only scenario included here is, is included here be, not because it's allowed by code, but because it most closely resembles the likely airflow scenario if a trickle vent is closed or is not working as intended. It is a good approximation to assume that if a tenant closes off a trickle vent, the mechanically assisted ventilation in that space will be very small or close to zero. Here you can see the air flows in, uh, in CFMs in the ERV option. To model air quality results, we focused on the condition of a single person respirating in a room for eight hours, such as when sleeping. Here are the results. PM 2.5 was used as a proxy for all particulate pollutants. To model pollution levels, we started with the air quality in New York City in May, on May 31st, 2023, which was actually quite bad and three times higher than the recommended WHO levels. As you can likely deduce, the infiltration only or exhaust only with trickle vent options did nothing to alter the pollution levels inside the apartment bedroom. Only when filtration is introduced through ERVs does the indoor pollutant level change. With MERV for eight filters though, the PM 2.5 levels drop to around only 14 in about two hours, but then remain steady at this higher rate for the rest of the night, still much higher than healthy levels. When MERV-13 filters are used on the ERV units, the PM2.5 levels are re reduced to the recommended levels after about three hours, depending on facade infiltration levels, and they remain steady. There are similar results for the CO2 concentrations, which is another important air quality measurement as detrimental cognitive effects are measured at levels above 1,000 parts per million, as shown here on the dotted red line. In the infiltration only scenario, the respiration process increases CO2 levels rapidly exceeding this threshold. In this zoomed in view of the same chart, the CO2 levels for the exhaust only with trickle vent systems shown here in blue seem to outperform the ERV options above, which also perform quite acceptably. 
However, keep in mind that the makeup air actually expected to come in through that trickle vent, while it's modeled this way, is actually not what we know is typically happening in the field. As we as discussed previously, the trickle vents are not a reliable source of makeup air. We couldn't model an exhaust only scenario without a trickle vent because there's no way of exactly knowing where the air would be coming from or its quality. In summary, ERVs are the reliable way to make sure that you don't suffer from lack of oxygen while sleeping at night with your door closed, and to make sure that pollutants are removed before you breathe them in. We hope we have demonstrated how balanced energy recovery ventilation is really the only and best way to provide indoor air quality sufficient for human health. In addition, it makes financial sense. For these reasons, we believe it should be required by code as everyone deserves the benefits they provide.